Hey guys, welcome back to the video. So in this video, we'll continue from where we left and see what are VPC endpoint and VPC endpoint services. So you see, I have these instances running from my last lecture. So a couple of videos are, a couple of instances are in AWS SA exam VPC and a couple of them are in my service VPC. So this is my instance private subnet and a public subnet. So I've created the instance in public subnet because I will use that as a jump box to SSH into my instance in private subnet. Okay, so you can see these are my instances. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to access SSH into my instance in public subnet in my service VPC. And then if you remember, we had an HTTP server running in my instance in my private subnet in the service VPC. So I'll just confirm that. So I'll SSH into my instance in public subnet in service VPC. So I'll repeat that this is the instance in service VPC. So now I'll copy the IP of my instance of private subnet, copy it and i'll go to and now i'll just do a service status on http <laughs> so you can see the service is running and if i do a curl uh, you'll probably see hello from endpoint service so that's what we have running here and this is the service which you're going to consume on a private instance running in AWS SA exam VPC. So the first thing which I'm going to do, so this is where we are going to consume it, the instance in private subnet, okay? Now first thing what I'm going to do is create a network load balancer. To create endpoint service, you need network load balancer. So I'll create it. I'll create an internet facing load balancer. Uh, you can keep it internal as well. So it will work with internal as well, but I'll create an internal load balancer, internet facing load balancer, sorry. And you can see I'm creating it in my service VPC. And I'll put it in my public subnet. So I have only one public subnet, so I'll put it there. And this is one of the back, uh, drawback basically. So in order to, basically I'll show you what, what's the drawback. I have one public subnet. So for production instances, maybe when you're trying to create the service in production, you would want to have your network load balancer across multiple public subnets because that is where your service would be available. So I'll just show you once we have this setup. So let me create a target group. Oh, so the target group already exists. I have to rename it. Let me create the target group. I'll register the targets later. So I'll just go to next. <coughs> create. So my load balancer is created. Now I just need to copy the, basically just recheck the ID of my instance, which I need to put as a target so go to ec2 and it's 858 so this is the instance which i need to put behind the load balancer this is the private instance running the http server so i'll put this behind the load balancer go to listeners go to target group go to targets it and I'll select my instance <coughs> 858 so I'll add it to register so this is going to take some time to get registered so I'll pause this video and come back hey guys welcome back so my status is still initial but if I try to access this on a web page uh, this uh, endpoint of my endpoint uh, sorry, endpoint of my network load balancer, you can see the page is available. So we'll, this will be up in maybe a minute or so. So let's just continue. So I'll go to VPC console and go to endpoint service and I'll create an endpoint service. So you can see my network load balancer is listed. So I'll just select that. 
for acceptance criteria i'll uncheck it because i wanted to get it accepted automatically and i'll create the service once this is done i'll go to endpoints so but before that i need to copy the service name yes so because when i'll create endpoint i would be needing this so i'll go to endpoints create endpoint and i'll select find service by name copy what we had and you can see it found it and we want to create it in our aws sa exam bpc and you can see there's just one subnet 1b because we had network load balancer in 1b just one subnet that's why it's not available anywhere else for security group i'll use the security group which i have been using which is launch wizard 12 and get rid of the default and i'll create the endpoint so this will also take some time before it becomes available right now the state is pending so i'll be back when it's available hey guys so our status is available of the endpoint now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my ec2 console <coughs> and now i'll ssh into my instance which is in my aws sa exam vpc public subnet and from there i'll go to instance in my private subnet so i'll copy this i'll do key forwarding so that i can ssh into my instance in private subnet okay so i'm in now i'll copy <coughs> now i'll copy the ip of my instance in private subnet and i'll ssh and i need to copy the service endpoint url as well so i'll go back to vpc console <coughs> go to endpoints and i'll copy this endpoint url so if i do curl on this if i've done everything correct i should return it should return me hello from vpc endpoint so you can see the same output which we got on a service uh, we, for instance we are getting it on this so we have not done any vpc pairing or any kind of connection but we are still able to hit that server so we're basically consuming that service over here so i hope you like this video please subscribe to my channel